My name is Sharona Ross, and I'm a surgeon in Tampa, Florida. I would like to bring to your attention a wonderful event that is coming up named the Third International Women in Surgery Career Symposium. This year, this event is hosted by the Johns Hopkins University at New Baltimore, uh, and this event will occur between May 31st and June 2nd. I was also asked to tell you a little bit about my education and training, surgical practice, uh, more specifically regarding my uh, specialty, my clinical research, what, what exactly I do uh, in my practice, as well as a few words regarding lifestyle, the surgical lifestyle. Can you have a, a family? And what should you expect if you were to choose a career in surgery? I will, I will finish my presentation by giving you more detailed information regarding the Women in Surgery Career Symposium. So my training. Um, I uh, was born and raised in, in Israel. I have, I'm a citizen both in Israel and the U.S. However, I was born and raised in Israel. And uh, in Israel, it's uh, mandatory to do two years of military service. And of course, I did that right after high school. Uh, following my discharge, the first weekend after my uh, discharge, I actually met my future husband, uh, Jack. And um, although it wasn't uh, intentional, it wasn't something that I planned, because I was very guarded in, in, with respect to that. I knew that what I wanted to do is go into medical school and become a surgeon. However, you, sometimes you don't choose uh, things that occur to you uh, throughout your life. And I met my husband, who's now with me for 22 years. Uh, we did, uh, once we got married, we came to the U.S. He was born and raised here in the U.S. And while I was doing uh, my undergraduate education, he was doing second degree. And that's when we had the first uh, two uh, children. Uh, when I started medical school, my son was uh, a year and five months, my daughter was uh, two months, and my husband started law school. So just when people tell you this can't be done, always remember it can be done. Uh, only, the, all, the only thing you need to, do to, to, to have is the wish to succeed. After my undergraduate, I applied to uh, medical school, and because my husband Jack wanted to remain in Washington, D.C., I uh, went to George Washington University Medical School. Uh, I completed uh, my medical degree, and during that time, uh, we had our third child. And uh, from there, I went to my surgical residency, which was at the University of South Florida. And during that uh, training, I had my fourth child. Uh, following my residency, I wanted to specialize in certain areas and therefore did two fellowships. Uh, the two fellowships uh, allowed me to uh, get certified in minimally invasive surgery with regard to uh, HPV, which is a part of biliary pancreas, um, the liver, the pancreas, and the biliary system, gold blocker, as well as advanced GI, the upper GI specifically, the esophagus, the stomach, the small bowel, the large colon, um, which is uh, just the right side, so what we call foregut. Um, after that, and during that time, is when we NOTES came about. And NOTES is what uh, it stands for, Natural Orifice uh, trans uh, uh, Transluminal Endoscopic Surgery. And what th that led me to uh, uh, go to my next uh, fellowship, which is GI endoscopy. GI endoscopy, I was trained by gastroenterologists to work with a flexible uh, gastroscope and do operations. If laparoscopically is outside the organs, inside the abdomen, now I'm doing it through the inside of the audience. And that's what this fellowship allowed me to learn and do. So this is how a week in my life looks like. First of all, my specialty after all that training, 15 years of training, led me to uh, uh, foregut surgery, which, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, includes upper GI and HPB, hepatobiliary pancreas. I, my operation uh, span from maximally invasive, big incisions, taking out uh, a tumor or cancer in the head of the pancreas with a lot of reconstruction, to minimally invasive operations all through the belly button, leaving no apparent scar. And now we also offer, uh, my partner and I, endoluminal type of operations where we don't even make an incision. We put a device through the patient's mouth 
through the esophagus into the stomach and can do operations that way. I will show you shortly uh, clips of this kind of uh, uh, minimally invasive laparoscopic surgery through the belly button. So a week in my life, Mondays, I have conferences in the morning, then uh, I, I spend some time in research, uh, and then clinic, followed by seeing patients uh, that are in-house, in the hospital. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays are the days that I actually in the operating room and then rounds and see uh, in-house patients in between cases or after my OR schedule, OR cases. On Friday is, again, I, I, so I spent some time on research. Uh, once again, I have clinic. Overall, per week, I would say 40 to 60 patients that we see per week. And then uh, see uh, patients that are in-house, in the hospital. My clinical research, uh, we, we are very uh, relatively productive. We publish around 10 to 20 publications a year. And we have many uh, national and regional presentations. Uh, in the U.S. and uh, Europe. Women in surgery, I, um, that's one of my interests. I believe that we will have shortage in surgeons in the future, near future, unless we encourage more women to enter the field of surgery. And finally, family, as, as you heard uh, just a second ago, I have four children, and I've been married now for 20 years with my husband for 22 years.